Many people have asked how we filmed this gulper eel. So here it is, the behind the scenes view. First of all, I looked through again what we filmed to see if there's any super wide shots so you can see the whole animal in one go. And I only just found this little piece here. I'm gonna freeze frame it so you can see it all. This is a dead fish, it's recently dead. It's just been caught, I'll show you how. So let's just get a little more detail on that. I've just pulled it in and put it sideways so you can see it better. And you can see it's got this sort of almost rectangular body with a very thin tail. Its body's brown and dark black in places, very dark black, and its tail is red, but that still looks black in deep water because the water takes out all the red. And there at the end of its tail would have been a bioluminescent lure. That's how we think it might hunt. It uses the lure to attract fish. It dangles its lure right by its mouth, so an unsuspecting fish will get swallowed in one gulp. It's kind of bent back its tail near its head to do this. Actually, if we look at that tail again in detail, you'll see some little hairs that come off it, like, almost like whiskers. Those are probably sensory hairs that trigger the catching response. It's only in specimens that were as fresh as this, recently dead, that you can see that kind of detail. Most of the animals that are preserved, they're preserved in alcohol, which takes the color away. Occasionally you get some that have been stuffed really. Their skin dried and then they've been repainted, which kind of looks odd. Here's a slightly different species to the one we filmed in the London Natural History Museum. It's been preserved using that taxidermy method and painted. But you certainly not see the detail of the things like the hairs and the, and the true colour of the animal. This is probably the only footage in existence of a close-up of a gulper eel that's this fresh. You can see all the detail. So for example, this is the end of the gut and the reproductive organs. And then we can go on and see the red where the blood is still in the gills and the black shrinkled skin of the head because it expands so much. This fish was trawled from about 600 meters and what kills it is actually not so much the pressure. They've got adaptions to cope with differences in pressure. They come up somewhat themselves at night but um, it's more to do with the mechanical damage in the trawl and the um, change in temperature which kills them, at least immediately. As you can imagine, it's pretty rare to get a chance to film and study these creatures, so it's important that they're documented so that we can understand the deep sea better and the creatures that live there. The deep sea is very deep and very big. That's why it's hard and expensive to find anything here. And so there's still tons to know. Well over half our planet is pretty much still a mystery. So I've mentioned this detail on the dragonfish in case you saw that. And this gulp eel, pelican eel or umbrella fish was filmed in the same way. It's amazing that this strange creature was filmed only about 80 miles away from Los Angeles, off San Clemente Island. We were with a scientific team researching the deep sea, working out of the Scripps Institute in San Diego and organized by Harbor Branch, another marine facility in Florida. The ship was fitted with a special type of trawl net known as a cod end trawl. That's just like an ordinary net, but has a canister at the end of it known as the cod end. The mouth of the whole net can be open and shut remotely. And so by opening it at only specific depths, you know what you're catching comes from that depth. We opened the net at about 600 meters. That's nearly half a mile down. 
For about six hours twice a day, we'd put the net down and trawl along a deep sea trench between San Diego and the Channel Islands. Known as the San Clemente Trench, after the southernmost Channel Island, San Clemente. If you're an Apple Mac user, you'll know that they are currently using the Channel Island names for the latest OS, like Catalina. It's always dark where the creatures of the deep sea live, and trawling through the night makes little difference. When the net comes up, the cod end is emptied as quickly as possible into a container and the contents, the deep sea fish, squid, shrimps, various plankton and larvae, snails are all sorted out to research. Over about two weeks we saw several interesting fish this way, not used to knocking into anything in the open sea and they have very thin skins. The gobbler eel in particular has a really thin skin around its mouth, it's what makes a kind of balloon to suck in animals. And in fact, it's so thin that one of the early Victorian scientists, Gunther, noted that he could see the stomach contents of fish just by looking through the body. And that's also why you see tears on the side of the mouth as well, because the skin's so thin and it's damaged just by touching the net. We filmed them in a special tank called a Kreisel which is the German for merry-go-round. Circular flow of water keeps the animals from touching the sides. You've seen one if you've ever gone to look at jellyfish in a public aquarium. It's the way they hold delicate creatures in mid-water. It's not something that really works for such a heavy fish as the gulper eel, uh, but it did keep it away from the glass. If the fish was dead, we could also hold it. Some people have said this is cruel, but we wanted to show these animals to you, and having died, the least we could do is make them known. As I mentioned, in this fresh state, they're much more valuable to observe than the bleached ones that are kept in alcohol. And you get a feel for the animal. You can see they're much smaller than you might have thought they are. Of course, it would be great to go into the sea but filming with ROVs and submarines is much more expensive than even trawling. Perhaps as small remote camera systems get better, we'll begin to see even more. But until then, we're using methods devised by the Victorians in their first expeditions to the deep sea nearly 200 years ago. It's extraordinary that we share our planet with animals like this gulp reel. There's one or two submarine shots of it as well, which um, aren't mine, but I will uh, give you the links to them so you can see how it inflates itself. You can see them in the description below. And of course, there's loads of weird and wonderful animals here on the Induna channel. And we're trying to upload a video every week, so if you'd like another one, please subscribe and maybe even click the bell. Thank you.